requesting jobs, health care, and education from the second Libyan who joined us in Northampton, Massachusetts, imagine how the audience responded and how I responded. This Libyan is in Northampton because he's in graduate school at the University of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. He is there with his family. Mm -hmm. The government of Libya pays for his education, mm -hmm. pays for his room and board, pays for the living expenses of his family mm -hmm. while he is in school. Mm -hmm. This is not just a special status that has been accorded to this individual Libyan. Mm -hmm. Any Libyan who wants to go to school anywhere in the world, if they are able to get accepted, if it's the Sorbonne in France, if it's the University of Massachusetts, if it's Yale, if it's anywhere here, they come and the government pays their fees. I happen to visit Alpha University because, of course, the NATO bombs had destroyed some of the classrooms and um, uh, uh, the infrastructure there, the library was kind of uh, just really everything just messed up. Um, and so I visited them and the, the dean was literally shaking with fear when he came to get me, I mean shaking with anger when he came to get me to tell me you have to come now. And so I went to the university and I saw. He was angry because when it happened he watched as this, this bomb danced in the sky. It went zigzag, zigzag, up, down, up like this. It was searching for the target. Wow. And he was standing in the parking lot and he was watching it stupefied. And then when it finally came down, of course, he felt the, the blast. And um, he was uh, angry. The, the prayer room was also damaged as well. We don't know what NATO was aiming at, but they hit the university. Now, I decided that I would ask the students about their life on the campus. I asked them, uh, how much is your tuition? And the dean translated for me. They don't have any tuition. They, uh, they didn't even know what that word was. They pay nine dollars a year and that is their school fee. They, I asked them, how much do you pay for your books? They don't pay anything for their books. Now imagine the kind of America that we could have if all of our young people had access to a decent quality education for as long as they want to get that education. This doesn't just pertain to young people. Anybody who wants to go to school can go to school if you're a Libyan national free of charge. I had the opportunity, actually I need to uh, also mention that Don DeBar is here. Don, you need to stand up because Don went to Libya with me in 2009 and he was able to see pre-bombing Tripoli. Joshua, who is with the camera, went most recently when um, I realized that uh, something was wrong and I needed some alternative journalists to go back and record what was happening so that the American people could have access to the truth. And much of the video that has been shown has been the video that Joshua shot it and Don produced it. opportunity to visit a hospital in Libya. 
And so I went to the hospital and I just went up to one person and I said, you know, uh, do you have an insurance card? Um, are you worried about how much your bill is going to cost? Well, health care in Libya is free. So they don't have to worry about whether or not they are going to be able to pay the bill and so maybe they won't go to the doctor at all. They go to the doctor. They go to the hospital. They receive care. Now, there may be some complaint about the quality of care. But they can get seen, they can get care, and the doctors largely have been trained in the West. So they get quality care, and they don't have to pay for it. I ask them, how much is your medication? They do not pay for their medication. They have a government that provides health care for them. And suppose you, you have a, a kind of special case, and you have to travel, say, to Britain in order to um, be treated. Well, guess what? The government will pay and send you to Britain so you can see the specialist, so mm -hmm. you can have your health problem attended to properly at no cost to you. Now, a government that really cares about its people will make sure that its people are well. That's right. That's right. And if the government doesn't care, then it will be reflected in poor health. Now, another thing that um, I saw both pre-bombing and post-bombing was cranes everywhere. They're building, building, building inside Tripoli, outside Tripoli, all in the country, in, in the countryside. Building, building, building. Well, guess what, what they're building? They're building houses. Why are they building houses? Because they believe that shelter is a human right. And everybody in Libya deserves to have at least one home. Now there are some people who have many homes. And the government said if you have many homes, then maybe you need to give up one of those homes so that everybody else can have a home. And now they have started building. Well, of course, after the bombing, of course, you know, the bombs fall everywhere and they're falling, uh, falling on the new homes that are being built. But imagine a government that believes that shelter is a human right and then actually actively provides shelter for their people. of the children in this country who go to sleep hungry well, yeah. every night. Yeah. If our government really cared about our people, then food prices wouldn't be done. would be subsidized. Mm. And you wouldn't have 40% of the cornfields in this country going to put gasoline in a car, it would be to make sure that people were eating at night. And it would not be 